All right, what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to Swiss Remedy Podcast. It's your boy, Dr. J. Mr. Wash. Ash Lorraine. Ash Lorraine always comes a little silent. Like, you're quiet. I haven't talked in a she, she while. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually watching TV, but I'm ready. Raise your voice in here. Ashley Ray. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> deep, not deeper. Oh, louder. It's really. Ashley Ray. There you go. Uh, all right. Please don't like, 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 like make it loud. Ashley Ray. Ashley Ray. Deep in a raspy ass voice. Yeah. How about I say, do your voice? What's that moment like this one? Do the mustard voice? Do your voice? Do your cookie voice? See ya. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do the whole list. <laughs> That's a good song. I sing it to my niece all the time. Oh, I bet. See ya for cookie. Good enough for me. I thought I know you too low. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good song. That's terrible. Got it on vinyl, nigga. Got it on vinyl. That was the first time I thought it was, I forgot the name of that movie. But this nigga be telling her when he wants her to do something. They was in high school or whatever. And she, he be like, you can do it. He said, I'll do it for you. You try to ask me in the muster voice. And he, he be like, she's like, no, I don't want to do that. And she like, he like, do it. She like, will you please help me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do my kids like that. Talk to me in the muster voice. I don't do too many voices, so. You need to learn. I do the, uh, that you voice. You remember that? It was like on Slim Shady. I think it was on Slim Shady. Oh, yeah. Slim Shady. <laughs> no, no, no. Scare it. No. Oh. Uh. <laughs> He's like, oh, give us, get some to Jay. Get some to Jay. <laughs> that sounds like Big Mouth. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a good one. That's, that's a great show. Yeah, yeah it is a good show. Y'all need to watch Netflix. What do you remember? What do you remember? I got a hormone monster. My hormone monster would be whack. Like yeah, you're whack. Well, they'll be like, you're whack. Come on, you don't be talking about nothing. So. Basically. Yeah. Do it, Ashley. Yeah, Ashley be like, no. Send a thirst trap picture. No. Come on, like you had like the old hormone monster. Yeah. 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 I didn't know what the hell that nigga was saying. Hey, do your thing. I couldn't have Maurice. <laughs> Maurice is yeah, <laughs> nah, you, you wouldn't make it. Y'all would butt heads. Mm-hmm. And what's up with a girl name? Monsters with mm-hmm. Yo, Bubba Bear. Bubba Bear. My brother's saying Bubba Bear. <laughs> Who's that voice? Uh, uh, that she got Miss Nell. Yeah, the next one. The half and half. What's her name? Oh, she's the one that played? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the. Uh, oh, I, I just watched her on Bridesmaid. Yeah. That's my, that's my movie. Maya something. Maya Rudolph. Yeah. My mama is Minnie. Yeah. Who? Minnie uh, Ripton. Yeah. Oh, Minnie Ripton. Yeah. 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 See, you see the information that you learn when you come here? You're right. Many rips. I just like how she like she plays like the judge on the good place. Um they tell me like they've been in heaven and stuff like that. Oh, and yeah, the I judge is supposed to be like not a character. And she was like the judge went to like Earth to see kind of like how people live, the humans live and stuff like that. And she was like, hey you got everything in this show and those stuff. She like, and apparently I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> I'm glad y'all guys are in good spirits today. It's been kind of a, a solemn weekend. Well, after Sunday, Sunday night, Sunday morning, yeah, Sunday morning. So, um, what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna try not to be like solemn about it, but just in case anybody doesn't know what happened. No, we already had the funeral. We second line. Yeah, we second line at this point. Celebrate party for those of you that know uh, New Orleans culture. Hey, matter of fact, and this is a side, and we're gonna get into what we're gonna get into. But y'all should watch the uh, that Evolution of Hip Hop. I watched it last night. Never I heard. loved it. Everything yeah. they played, like back in the nineties, I played on a tape. Re- like it I, just showed me how much I was like, oh, I like. It, it made me feel like I wasn't going crazy because I was like, I heard that Trigger Man beat on every fucking thing. Yeah. Like, so every bounce song. Yeah. But it's funny how people never heard it before. Because really? our friend was like, I don't know what that is. Like Man, we never heard shit. it. We gonna start this. All right, we got the. I don't know the name. My nigga, DJ Jimmy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hold the man up. Okay, my yeah. bad. Yeah. It's Jimmy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. What a girl. Okay, yeah. okay. Let's take yeah. me back. I, I like that whole thing. But the, I just said that because a little bit, though. they talked about they should get a history second, second line and that kind of stuff. So yeah. I think that's a good thing. And, and twerking. Yeah, it ain't no Molly Cyrus thing out here. I think everybody knew it wasn't Miley Cyrus' thing. But it, it was kind of crazy that like, in the, even in the DJ Jimmy song, they talk about twerk. 
Yeah, you know, like people like the people like like twerk just came about. Yeah. But you know how. Like, that was like in the eighties. Yeah, I didn't even know how to twerk. Still don't. Jimmy, my nigga Jubilee. <laughs> But yeah, if y'all get a chance, y'all should check out the Hip Hop Evolution on Netflix and they, the Bounce episode which has the ones. And what? it kind of discusses, you know, the whole second line, bounce culture, and all that kind of stuff, which is what we were addressing. And we can get back and to the topic. The oh my yeah, they had, a, they had everything on. But we were addressing the second line because, as you know, like Sunday, uh, lost an NBA legend, Kobe Bryant, uh, died in a helicopter crash with his daughter. And uh, seven other people, including his assistant coach, um, two other players, two other and players, and the parents of the parents of the players were all mm-hmm. on the helicopter, and they all passed away um, Sunday morning. You know, condolences to the family and everything. But what we wanted to do with today's episode is kind of just discuss, you know, um, the uplifting side of I don't want to say the uplifting side of death because that sounds bad, but you know, celebrating the the life. Of people and what you can do after dealing with death, um, but such as I mean, which is basically like you know the basis of everything with second line because you know second line is about the celebration because you don't want to be like Solomon. Yeah, you're gonna have a funeral, you're gonna be sad because somebody died, but then after all of that is over, it's time to celebrate. It's time to move on with life. Like people are still living. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how did you, how, let's just start with like how y'all felt like Sunday and then how you transition to what you go on with after that. Like, how'd you feel I, on Sunday when you first heard it? I didn't think I heard it until, like, the afternoon. I was on the phone to my wife. Kobe Bryant died. I was like, sign up, get out of here. Yeah, it was crazy. <clears throat> how I felt was just shocking. Like, I didn't believe it at first. I didn't either. I'm just, I'm, I was just like, till I see more of the news, I ain't believing it. Internet be lying. I'm not on social media. So that, that's kind of a bad thing too. It's like when, when you're not on social media, that's a whole other topic. But when you're not on social media, it's like you miss stuff like that. Because I yeah. happen to not be on there like for a couple of hours. And like still, when I got the call, they were like, yeah, you know, Kobe Bryant died like a couple of hours ago. I was like, well, I guess I ain't been online in a few hours, so maybe I need to go back and look. And I started seeing him. I went back and logged back on. I started seeing everybody talking about it. I'm like, Damn. And I started getting texts. No, yeah. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then my brother, like, my brother texted me and he said his homeboy just landed in L.A. and everybody's crying. Yeah. I said, wait a minute, what happened? He died in the helicopter. That's all I heard. Next an hour later, his daughter was there. I was like, God. Yeah. Yeah. It was sad. Like I said, I was on the phone with somebody. We was talking about, um, they actually <laughs> hit me up. Talking about um, somebody they went to church with that committed, like, suicide. Mm-hmm. And so, so we was talking about that. Um. And then we were talking like, yeah, the somebody died. And then we were talking like somebody else that he knew that passed away. And we were talking like, yeah, death coming threes. So he was like, we were talking about this and death. And then next thing you know, while we were, while we were talking, he was like, man, what the fuck are they talking about? I looked at what you say. He was like, man, somebody said, this can't be true, this and that. So we both kind of get on, looking on the internet, kind of was up, and it popped up that Kobe Bryant died. I still can't believe it. That was the hardest thing, like, to hear it. That was probably the craziest deal I had ever heard. Like, cause when, yeah, when, it don't seem like that for real. It still doesn't feel, feel real to me. Yeah, because when they called me, they were like, hey, you know Kobe Bryant died? And I was like, I, I feel like I didn't hear it correctly. Because so I was like, that don't make sense. Like, Kobe Bryant, like, he's 40. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, and he was just on somebody that seemed like last week. They were just posting me yeah. about him and everything. I was like, which like, which like, was like before, like, so he tweeted out to LeBron because LeBron just passed. That's him. what I was thinking of. Yeah. So, the day before, he was talking about that shit. The assist league or something. Yeah, he had just passed him uh, in scoring points yeah. or something, like, the scoring record or some shit like that. And I was like, oh, he was just doing something like last night, so they must be saying something else. Like, you're not saying Kobe Bryant's dead because that doesn't make sense. Like, it, it wouldn't make sense because he wouldn't be in there. Like, yeah, no. Like, it's on the internet. And so I had to go and log on. Like you said, like Ashley said, man, I, I logged on. And I was like, damn, this is crazy as hell. I think, I think it hits different to people because um, this is like the biggest death of uh, our age, our generation, whatever. Right. Yeah. That the, the iconic status he had and stuff like that at this time, that he wasn't involved in any kind of issues, whatever, like, when Whitney Houston died, or whatever, people were sad, mm-hmm. but 
all the shit with her and Bobby yeah. and the drugs and yeah, shit like that. that. When Michael Jackson died, it was still like, oh, little, oh little, no, little stuff. no, 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 and, and, and he was, and Michael girl. Jackson was almost sixty. Like he was, he was yeah. kind of old. But it still hurt. You know, no, I'm not saying it didn't hurt, but I'm saying that like it stopped for me. He wasn't in like the on, on the beginning part of any part of his career. Like on the beginning. Kobe like, was like, literally at the, the beginning prime, part yeah, of his retirement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, yeah. in the prime, his prime years, but like he finished his first career off. And basically started his new career. He was starting a new career, and it was it was looking promising. And so, like, I look at it like um, it's kind of like our generation's like uh, who was it, like James Dean, you know, uh, was that James Dean? Who that died that? in a motor uh, yeah. automobile accident. That yeah, was, that was James he was like Dean. Really he was young. young. Yeah, he probably he was played really like young, but he was like two, really popular. Yeah. And everybody was like, oh my god, he's the next second coming of all the blah. Yeah. And then he died in like a car accident. Like this is like the what fifties something like that. But like it was a big deal because they're like because people always address it like rappers address it. I think Lil Wayne said it in one of his songs like you know dying and leaving a young corpse. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so like that was a big deal for them because it was a young up and coming person starting a career and then they die. And it's like it throws everything off for people because it's like damn you not like you wouldn't expect you wouldn't expect that person. So is it like um the guy from Fast and the Furious when he died? Paul Walker. Paul Walker, but he wasn't as popular. I mean, but, 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 nothing against Paul Walker, but, but he this is my thing, like, 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 like you say, like so. he wasn't on Kobe's level. But, like, so but when he that that death was like, are you serious? Like, yeah, he yeah. was too. Yeah, because because like I said, we was in the prime of Fast and Furious series. Yeah, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it was like he's prominent on the screen all the time. Right. And stuff, but like you say, he's his he's prominent on the screen at that time. But you had somebody like Kobe that played in him for twenty years. Yeah. So you've seen this person day in and day out for two yeah. years. Yeah, you got little things that would be like Kobe, yeah. like doesn't feel, don't even want to say that. Yeah. It's, 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 he's had, he's become an icon. Like yeah. Paul Walker was on his way to being an icon. icon. Yeah, Kobe was already an icon and was about to add on to that. And so that's why it was so crazy that you know he passed, especially in the way that he did. And then to add more to it, he passed with his daughter that recently. You've seen nothing but pictures of him and his daughter together. Yes. Yes. She's going to be the female him. Scene. And then y'all saw that, like, UConn put the jersey up for her. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's what school she wanted to go to? She wanted to go to UConn. So they put, a, they they put a, a, a seat uh, on there. Um, that was nice. And they put a jersey with the number two on it, with a Husky jersey, with flowers yeah. and everything. Because she said she wanted to go to UConn whenever she got she, there. She was going to change. If, if the WNBA was still around by the time she got there, yeah, she because, would change because, because of her name and stuff like that, yeah. everybody would have tuned in. And people would have been watching. They'd have got money. Like, they'd have had Because I didn't know. Shows. My brother was telling me um, maybe a couple months ago, like, man, you ever seen Kobe daughter, like, play? I was like, nah. So I yeah, started she, watching her, and it's crazy. Because all you need is one. Right. And one person. You need a star. Yeah. You know? Just like when they first came out. Star. I mean, when they first came out, they had stars. Yeah. They had that that whole women's. Y'all don't stars. watch, so y'all don't watch the WNBA at all. I, I still watch it. I, last person I know about it in the WNBA was like Diana Taurasi or something like that. Yeah. And she I only know her because when she's hate. in college, because college girl, mm -hmm. college women's basketball is cold. Yeah, I so kind of like, hate. We don't have a team anymore, but you know. Oh, comes with the shit. Yeah, I don't understand why we don't have. I guess they want to make it another. And they have enough financially. Wow. Right, because you're not gonna make no money off of it. But I, when I went to the um, to to the, the museum in was that the museum in DC or was it the, the museum in Atlanta? One of the museums, with, like history, had a big thing on the comments. That's cool. Because like they were like they were four times yeah, champions. Yeah, four, four in a row. Yep. Yeah. The first, when, they, when the league started, they won the first four championships. Yep. And Cheryl Swoops on there. Yeah, I had her shoes. I had Tim Pierre Cooper's shoes. Had her shoes too. I like Cheryl Swoops better. Yeah, my sister had Cheryl Swoops shoes. But I mean, all of that. I was so happy to like, have women's shoes on and play basketball. But, I was I was, so happy. but imagine what would have happened if Gianna Bryant had gotten to that level. You know how many shoes they would have sold in? Mm -hmm. Nigga, like, that's Kobe's daughter. And uh, people just gonna watch to see, oh shit, she played just like Kobe. Yeah, I was gonna and, watch. And her and I, gonna watch. Just like how they, they play LeBron's son's games yeah. on TV. Like I watched them too. No, somebody, yeah. they would have, she would have been in high school, they yeah. would have played a high school girls game. They been, and you would have been tuned in to the high school girls game like they do, like you said, LeBron's son. And, and that's what makes the whole thing even more crazy. I got, of course, it's, it's crazy to lose, you know, all those people in that plane in a helicopter crash because that's just a freak accident. But 
even more so that you had a 13 year old. Did you read There's about three 13 year olds that were on the come up. You read about the accident? Yeah. And I mean, it, it's, it sucks the way that it happened. Yeah, I was like, but uh, you read about it? This it, it, it should be a. It should have been a judgment call. Like, if you're gonna ground the planes and stuff like that, you should have grounded the helicopter. You should have. Yeah, I was like, so if you. Well, they grounded the other helicopters. He had a right. Helicopter. Right. Yeah. They said they. But you. So like they grounded like the the traffic helicopters and all the other helicopters that were supposed to be flying like <clears> the <throat> city owned or whatever. Mm -hmm. All those were grounded, but his wasn't because you know he was just going back and forth between his house and the. Yeah. And the, uh, the practice facility or whatever that they were playing at. And so, you know, and it was a real bad fog. In fact, you know what it made me think of? Whenever the next day, when that fog moved in here, mm -hmm. like that, basically, I guess that must have moved from the same direction or something. Because, mm -hmm. like, it was dense. Like, you couldn't, it, there was like zero visibility over most of the city here in Houston. What? And so, the next day? Yeah, Monday? The next day. Monday. Because when uh -huh. I was working Monday morning, well, I go to work at 5 something in the morning. So, like. See, that was yesterday, right? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yesterday, like five something in the morning, when I was dropping work. Like, it was foggy. It made me think about that fog we drove in that you that you said I was tripping. But well, I think it was tripping, but like I said, I we, had, cry. we had to go in like at one mile per hour because you and I had to look at the lines on the ground to drive because you cannot see uh, like the front of your face. And that's and that's what they were saying about the fog that they were flying in was that it was like couldn't see and so like he had been circling for a long time because yeah you see. can see the like the trail they took and how oh, i didn't watch I didn't well watch no he because he because like i said when, when they got clearance they took the freeway yeah they, they, followed, they, they followed the freeway. freeway but then they said the fog got even worse that he couldn't see because he was flying by the history or whatever mm -hmm. and they say he ended up from what it looked like whatever he ended up being getting lost mm -hmm. and he, he turned he turned the wrong way and basically by him turning the wrong way he turned he into like the mountains, mountains. Yeah. oh he hit the mountains yeah. yeah, he went into the mountain. So, so like he went, he was far along the, the freeway going like east or west or whatever. It just and then like at one point he couldn't find where he was anymore. It just felt like he kept turning and turning. Well, that's what he started out doing. So, he just kept well, it looks like it, he was going straight, like maybe finding the freeway, y'all, and then it looked like he just kept turning. Oh yeah, because at that point that's when he was lost, and so like oh. he tried, he made, he kept making turns trying to figure out where to go, and then one time he made a turn and ended up in that mountain range. He hit the mountains. Yeah, you see that, right? So, I mean, all of that to say that, like, you know, it, it's important that, you know, you recognize that, you know, people have passed and, you know, you honor their legacy, whatever that they, that they you know, they pass on and you, you respect people's grieving. But at the same time, we want to discuss kind of like how, what you do after that. Like, what, what are your next steps? Not, not just dealing with this death, but dealing with death in general. What, what do you do? How do you move on from that point? What, what, is, what is the thing that brings you out of that? Not quite a depression, but that grief. Whatever you've done, because I think all of, all three of us have dealt with death before. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like I say, it was kind of in recent years. Well, what I'm saying, because it's kind of crazy, because like I said, uh, this happened on Sunday morning or whatever. And like I said, I wasn't thinking about talking about death, and then I seen on Instagram stuff my cousin posted like my grandfather had died the day before, uh, six it's years like ago. Oh, mm -hmm. anniversary. Yeah. And like I said, because I, I thought about like this is yeah, this is like on Saturday because it was this funeral was on the first, which is. Coming up on we on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. So what did you do after that to get yourself like back, kind of, or whatever happened? Like what like, changed? Back to like, like a normal routine. Because that's somebody that's not yeah. in your life, so I know that's not normal. Well, yeah, like I said, because that was somebody that, like I said, I, from like three months to like I was raised by five or six for school age, whatever, I stayed with my grandparents yeah. you know, and stuff like that. And like I say, and after that, I stayed with them like all the, every summer and stuff like that and any other time. So that was like my dad too. Mm -hmm. And stuff. so you just, I guess my thing was I'm, I'm, I have tunnel vision. So when things happen, I kind of just focus on what's in front of me. If I have like certain things I need to do, whatever case may be, I'll just focus on that and kind of, and kind of turn off everything else. I can see you on the same page. Cause I just had an aunt that's passed. I just thought about like my aunt passed in September, October. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, September just she's passed in September. She passed in September. My dad passed in September, and I guess that took off the pressure off me thinking about my dad's anniversary. My aunt passed, so I just focused more on just being around family, or I just had a lot of work to do. I didn't even think about trying. I just I actually did keep it like. With my mom, cause that that's a sister. And they talked every day, and to this day, 
I can see, like it kind of affects her around like seven o'clock, she'll text me. Yeah. I just thought about, and I told my brother, I just thought about like, she's texting me because she missed me talking to her. Right. She's like, you okay? I'm like, I'm good. But I, but at first I was like, why she keep talking? <laughs> yeah, like, we don't talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you talk yeah I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I don't talk to you like that. You uh, can't feel all okay for. We ain't friends. Cause I swear yeah. I did that to her yesterday. She's like, I said, why you keep texting me? She's like, I'm at church. I'm just trying to make sure you're okay. I was like, all right, okay, now. let me be nice. <laughs> you know what's really crazy is tomorrow. Are you serious? Is the anniversary of my dad's death. I just realized that when you said that, when you talked about anniversary, I was like, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow's January 29th. I so, try not to think about it. Yeah, I don't. I don't ever. Like that's what I'm saying. I don't really mm-hmm. think about it. And, I, and since we're discussing how you moved on from that, like, that's kind of how I did, too. I mean, because, like, initially when my dad died, like, it was, it was probably a week. I couldn't function. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I went home. I was dealing with family stuff. We, I mean, we had to arrange a funeral. Like, I, you know, I held it together for the things we had to do. But, like, but after that, function. when it's over, when the funeral's over, that's what, that's what yeah. I didn't know what to do. Like, I even had to go, when I tried to go to work. After my dad, I had to go home because I'm gonna say take it all in, right? Yeah, you, it don't hit you all the time. Well, I gotta because, like I said, when I thought about everything, it put me in like it, like you said, you don't want to think about stuff like that. You kind of have tunnel vision to move forward. Right. So we couldn't even think about it because, like I said, I thought about like when my grandfather passed, or whatever. Like we was all at the hospital, so when he took his last breath, we was there oh. and stuff. And like when he died, and everybody else kind of like in the room, whatever, like moved away, like in the halls and stuff like that. Me and my grandma was almost people like in the room. Yeah. I, I, I was like that with and, my dad. Like, and like I said, that's, that's just like eerie fucking feeling. Yeah, because they were like, actually, you know, you got to come. They didn't want to say they come to get the body. They were like, you need to step out. And yeah, and, 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 and like, me, and me, like I say, my grandma was in there and I was in there because it was like, we need somebody to stay up in here right now. Mm-hmm. It's like this, so I stayed up in there. You looking at this person like they sleep, but whatever, they but you know, like, they ain't even here no more. You just kind of like, it's just see, I, I, I didn't have to do that because I, I was in Houston. My dad there, so. So you had to drive down. That's even kind of worse in a way because my was. brother was in Mississippi. It's for somebody to call and tell you. I'm telling you, they did not want to call because that is the hardest call you got to make. See, see, and the way that this then you happened, by yourself in thing. Houston, probably. The greatest thing that happened was my my homeboy that I went to high school with. Uh, well, one of this dude I went to high school with worked with my dad. Mm-hmm. He called a dude that I'm actually cool with from high school. It was like, hey, you know Jeremy dead? And you know, he's like, hey, he, he like, had something happened, he passed out at work or whatever. They work in the same place at the, mm-hmm. at the base in Corpus. And so my homeboy hit me and he's like, hey, you at work? Uh, something happened with your dad. And so I was like, okay. And I was like, well, let me uh, let me call my mom. And so I called my mom. You know, my mom and dad weren't together at that time. So when I called my mom, it was like, I called her and she said, she said, hey, no, I'm just about to pull up to the hospital. They, they pick up an ambulance from work. So I, when we get to the hospital, I'll let you know what happened. And so then, like, I get a call back. And it's from my mama's phone. But I don't recognize her voice. Mm. And they're like, hey, is this uh, Jeremy Turner? I was like, yeah. And this is so-and-so with uh, Swan, blah, blah, the, the name of the hospital. Oh, wow. <coughs> she was like, your, your mom wanted me to give you a call. And I was like, what happened? And my mama must like grabbed the phone from the lady and she was like, my mom was like, Jeremy? And I could hear her like bawling crying on the phone. Mm-hmm. She was like, she's like, when he, he was already gone when he got here. And I was, she's like, and so later on I found out that like when they wheeled him in, like my mama said when they wheeled him in, like there was somebody on top of his chest giving him CPR yeah. and they rolled him into the hospital. So he was gone. And so like, I didn't find out like until I got, well until you know, they called me. That dude, he was gone already. And so it was crazy because, like, my homeboy, the one I hang out with the most here, uh, his dad is, like, one of my dad's best friends. And, like, my dad had heart attacks before. And so, like, his dad came in, and, like, he came in, like, in regular spirits or whatever. And he was like, because this is the story they told me, because, like I said, I didn't get that till hours later because I was way up here. Mm-hmm. And he said his dad, but my homeboy dad came in, and he was like, hey, so what room is he in? So can we go see him? He's like, uh, we gotta see what's going on with my boy or whatever. And then they, this, my mama said, she all she could do is just look at him and be like, "Hey, man, he, he ain't here, he gone." Mm-hmm. And so like, she said, he broke down worse than she did in the waiting room. And so I was like, I just dealing with dealing with not being there was a big deal for me. That's what I'm Like not being there and so like having and then having to drive. 
Because then I had to go get my, I had to call, when I didn't let my mama call nobody else because she was crying too hard. And I figured I was strong enough to call people. So I did okay until like I got to my sister, maybe. But I got to call my sister and like I was really trying to explain and talk to her. Uh, and then like I went to my car and I like got in a fetal position and like was like crying in my car. And then like after I got done grind for a while, I was like, I'm good. I'm gonna go finish the work day because we had to work a half day day anyway. Yeah. So I was like, I can finish out this half. And see, and that's, <laughs> that's the bad part about it, because I feel like I am that nigga. Like, something like that would happen in the middle of my day, and I would probably finish my day off. Because I'd be like, I need something normal. Yeah. Like that normal and that's thing. how I feel. When my I knew something was wrong, because everybody was calling me with my aunt. And I was just like, yeah, I don't call me at no 8 o'clock in the morning. What's wrong? They were like, you at work? You at work? And my mom was like, I don't want to tell you. Like, just tell me because she don't like I told her about that texting when we texted yeah. me like somebody passed away yeah, no bad, dude. Yeah, but my mom was real good like so and so died that's all you get because she ain't got no but she was like well, can you can you make it here I was like yeah but like how my dad passed she basically came in your daddy passed and I was like I just left there yeah. I just left he told me not to stay but I think I was more upset with who gonna call my brother and my nobody wanted to do it. And I was like, y'all know he gonna be mad. So I was trying to text his friends, but it was like five o'clock in the morning. Right. And get on Facebook. I need y'all to drive over there. Cause I'm about to tell him so he need to be with somebody. Cause my brother shut down. As soon as I told him, he hung up the phone. I can't get back in touch with him. Yeah. So his wife was in Afghanistan. So we had to figure out, basically tell somebody to get her back over there. Yeah, and and that's what was really hard. In fact, you said something about that text message, but like that's my homeboy, the, my homeboy that I was, that I was talking about, that, that like I've been close to for the longest, and his dad was close to my dad. Like my text message to him after I had like got home, my mom. You just text. He did. Huh? I said. Like, I said, hey, I said, say, bro, my daddy did. That they, like that's what. That's what everybody the text got mad said. at me because they said, Ashley, you ain't stay. Well, I'm sorry, y'all. You wrote, my daddy passed. Y'all gonna come over the house? We at the house. I, mean, I like, said that to everybody. You don't be thinking. Like, it's just, really, to be honest, I was pissed off. So I was like, y'all do what the fuck y'all want to do. I'm mad. So, and then when people would come to the house, I didn't have no emotions. Everybody was crying. I was right. Like, I didn't either. I was like, we good. I was fine for like days. Like I said, I, I curled up one time in a field position when I was talking to my brother and sister on the phone because it was just hard to talk. It, no, it was my brother that was hard because I called him first. And he didn't answer, so I called my sister and I talked to her or whatever. And then I got my aunt to go over to her house because she, my sister, lived in Dallas. So, like, my brother, I called and he wouldn't answer the fucking phone because he was still in college at that time. He was at College Station. So I'm like, I'm calling him. This nigga answered. I mean, man, at night, it's like 7.30 in the morning. Yeah. And so I'm like, I know this nigga sleeping because he sleep in. You know, he's a college student. So I called this nigga. I, I promise you I called him at least 15 times and sent text messages. Hey, bro, pick up the phone, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. And so finally he called me, and you could tell he half sleep when he when he called me back. And I'm like, hey bro, uh, I was like, dog, who who you with right now? And I think he was with this gal or whatever at the time. And I was like, dog, so he's like, so like something happened with dad, you know. He and he's like, Well, is he alright? And I all I remember saying was, nah. Nah, he's not alright. And I started crying. <laughs> that was the first time I cried. All I could say was, nah, he's not alright. And, they, and to this day, like, you can ask my brother. He didn't know my daddy died. Because all I kept saying was, nah, he not all right. He not good. And so he thought something just happened, and he was, like, doing bad in the hospital. Like, it took him, like, somebody else had to talk to him and be like, no, he he died. Oh, wow. And so, like, to, like I said, to this day, I, I still I, couldn't. I mean, I, I did tell my brother the wrong thing. I don't remember what I told him. Yeah, because you, you don't be thinking of that. I moment. didn't say it mean because I knew he was by himself, but I know I told everybody it was kind of rude. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I tried to be nice with my brother and sister, but everybody else, I just, hey, my I remember not. my homeboy, I seen him at the club like a month after my daddy passed. He said, Yo, ass talking about shots, dog. He's like, Hey, man, how much around? And I was like, Oh, he died. We can get these shots, though. Uh, he was like, You just basically, like, we couldn't talk about, I couldn't talk about dad for a long time. So now, my question to y'all is, is, is that healthy? Like, no, I was supposed to see somebody. Right what? I was doing the most. Like, I didn't know what to do. No, I was doing... The I think most. I was like the polar opposite. Well, not the, op the opposite, but like, I started focusing on working out a lot. That's when I lost a whole bunch of weight. That's when I, like, that whole health kick I was on, that was right after he died. No, I was going, I was drinking a lot. I didn't drink that much. <laughs> I 
I was drinking. I cut out. I cut out. I was drinking a lot. I was going out a lot. You remember that? I'm saying that's when we were right back into you. I I I was out. You said hang with hang with your sister. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was my favorite. I think that was my that was my fifth homecoming. That's how I was about to sit up. I was so drunk. But she's like, hey, hey, man, I'm fucked up. Yeah. I was like, what's up? Yeah, I don't. I don't remember being like. Oh, I, I probably got drunk a few, quite a few times. I always drink. But I kind of gave it to. I had some good friends around that time. Yeah. That I didn't know it. And by the time Alicia actually used to play chess with me like all the time. Mm-hmm. So she used to drink too with me. So I guess that was. <laughs> I was like, I nobody stop me from drinking. I, nobody said, "What's up, Bob?" Was that? No, I was doing them. Like it was just to the point I was drinking and wanted to fight folks. Oh yeah, no, you were doing too much. Maybe. Yeah, no, you was definitely. I don't do that no more. But the thing is, like, <laughs> how do you? But how else? Like, well, I'm not gonna say how else, because there's plenty of healthy ways to handle that damn mm-hmm. thing. But like, I think when you're in that moment, it's kind of hard. So like, even when we talking about like people dealing with like the Kobe death, and I know that it's not similar because it's like not somebody that's that directly connected to you. But when people deal with grief, everybody handles grief differently. So like for me, when I when I when I said I was gonna take the task of talking to everybody and setting up all the technical stuff for my dad passing, mm-hmm. like I felt like that's what I needed to do. Like I have to do that to in order to deal with this. Cause if I can think about it logically and I can like, you know, start putting funeral preparations together and I talk to everybody, then I, I can handle this. Yeah. I didn't believe I I didn't know how strong I was till I had to sit there and pick out a coffee. I was like, nah, daddy like this. And okay. I couldn't see my brother doing like he was breaking down too much. Yeah, no, my brother left. He, we walked out to the funeral home. Dang. And my uh, other dude just passed a couple of years ago. He came by and picked him up. Uh, and if he, he's like, because my you know, brother's a capitalist. And this is an old capital we know from Corpus, but he passed uh, two years ago. But he came and he's like, hey, my brother called me. He's like, I got to get out of here. My brother walked out of the funeral home, got in the car and left. That's how the. the I stayed at my daddy's grave while everybody left. I had, my, I had a friend take me back. <laughs> I wasn't going with that. I wasn't leaving. That's a year later. We tried to go to my dad's grave the the year like we tried to do the anniversary in 2015. Like so, a year after he passed, we all kind of wanted to go in there. Um, but then like my sister wanted to go back another time after that, and I went with her because I was like, yeah, no, it's cool and whatever. I can do that. My brother was like, I'm not gonna get out the car. I'm not gonna look at that grave anymore. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I haven't been back since. Like that was, I've been there twice. I've life. been, and the last time I've been, somebody went with me, but I wasn't okay. I just was not. Yeah, so no, I said I, I can't I do like it. it. I don't even like I have no grandparents alive, and they're all everybody's around each other. So it's basically I visited. I was like, this is horrible. Uh, I'm good. Yeah. I don't want to know my dad. My dad ain't there. That's how I was like. Yeah, hey, and that's how I view it too. Like I don't, I don't like. I don't like talking to a grave. Like, no. I know people go and they talk my to a grave. My family be taking pictures and putting flowers. Like, who you talking to there? Yeah, nah, I'm nobody good. there, man. Like, that, that my dad wouldn't like, want us to do that. Right. I don't think mine would either. My, not, not sitting there talking think, to a gravestone. I hate to say it, but I'm going to go it off. Yeah, no. Her name is on the already tombstone because she said it was cheaper to do it that. My mom wants to. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> I'll be glad. I mean, it is cheaper, it is though. Cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheaper, though. Hey, no, I learned, I, learned I learned a lot. I learned a lot with this funeral. That's what I'm saying. I learned a lot. My, my mama's like, how much it costs you wear my name? How many letters? Can we put Gertrude or Gert? I said, really? It I costs for each lot. letter. It costs for them to lift it up. And I was like, oh, God. It costs a lot for a funeral. What? And, and my dad had to do, like, a veteran's funeral, so, like, they covered part oh. of it. But, they like, most of the stuff costs... Most of the calls had nothing to do with the veterans part. Like it was just the coffin and shit the like that. Was high. So you have, so you have life insurance. You have to have life insurance. Yeah. Very but, people is expensive. But they didn't. They was They weren't cutting us a check that day. My mom put everything uh-uh. on her credit card. That's what my mom did too. She yeah, was my like, mom had to put it on the credit card. Yeah. Then they gave her the money. Yeah, we got the money. We get the money to a few months later. Yeah. Basically. So. That's when, and I ain't gonna lie. I don't know how it is in y'all family, but somebody dies, they gonna start coming in. And wow. that's what it felt like. I was like, why are these people at my mama house? Why are they we, calling my phone? Why are they doing this? Family is We had all kinds fucked. of shit happen. Like my you know, my dad had like some other kids and stuff too. Oh. And so like they they're older, they older. And like yeah, they came into the, the wake with name tags on. You what? And I 
That's some rude shit. They didn't shit. do anything at the funeral, but at the wake they did that shit. And I was like, that's fucked up. But I'm, I'm going to let well, them slide because, you know, they got their emotions. Let them have their emotions in here. Well, I found out I had a cousin at my grandma funeral. No, at my daddy's funeral. Yeah. She she basically wrote on his obituary. I didn't know they could do that on, I guess, the, the Chronicle or whatever. Uh -huh. Used to she wrote, R.I.P. my uncle. I was like, who the hell is That's how I met her. She was like, I met you at the funeral. I shook your hand. I thought you were my cousin. I thought you was my cousin on my mom's side. We got a whole bunch of them. But on my dad's side, no. And we had, we had issues with family that wanted us to fly his body to the, because he's from Florida. They wanted us to fly his body back to Florida. He's been living in Texas for 35 years. They, 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 didn't, come, they didn't come, they didn't come, huh? They said we had the funeral too fast for them to make plans. Oh, we? Uh, well, we had to wait. We had to wait over a week because we had to wait for the veterans. Uh, yeah, ceremony. I was about to say so veterans. Because we we you have to go on a Monday. Right. And he died on a, I think like a Friday, so mm -hmm. we had to wait a week and then that next uh, over that next weekend. So it was just, it was crazy. You know what? And now that I think about it, and then we could after this we can move on to happy stuff. Yeah. But hey, like, no. <laughs> I, now that I think about it, I didn't even tell my boss when I left what I was leaving for. Cause like you just left. No, I, I told her, hey, um, I you thought. What well, to me? To me, I thought I said, hey, I just found out my dad died. I need to go home. That's what I thought she. I said to her, but she said I didn't say that. But of course, you know that was like right after they had told me. So was, I have no idea what I said to her. But she was like, you said you had to go home because somebody had gotten sick or something, and I told you okay. I was like. I thought for sure I said my daddy passed and I needed to go home. And she was like, nah, that's not what you said. You don't know what you said. I don't know. Yeah, you don't know what you said. Yeah, you don't know what I thought for sure. I was like, I told her, I was like, I'm going to try to go home. I'll probably be It's probably going to be a few days. I got to see what's going on. You know, I, I thought I gave her a whole speech. Mm -hmm. She said, all I did was walk in and say, hey, man, somebody got sick. I got to go home. Well, <laughs> I guess I got old enough. I'm going to end it with this movie. Go ahead. With my aunt's funeral. I spoke, so hey. Oh yeah, I did too. <laughs> no, not how you. I'm not me speaking is way different. You oh. probably came there proper. I was like, <laughs> Gloriana to God. Oh my God. <laughs> I grew up Catholic. I just want to say it. I, we don't do stuff like that. You can't really talk during Catholic. It was a mess. Yeah, it's gonna be oh. a mess. You don't say nothing. But oh, I was sure. like, oh, I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna speak about uh, my aunt. Yeah, she she could cook. And some men, I don't want to talk about that man. <laughs> but I was like, she sure can cook. I'm going to miss her cooking. But it was like, my mama kept telling me, you don't sit down. What? Like, you started rambling. What? They gave me two minutes. My auntie came on there and said, her business. I was you, like, you hey. You took more than two minutes, though. So. I was like, give me, give me a beat. <sighs> what? You started rapping? No, I was going to sing. Did you sing? Not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you talking about like, give me a beat? Uh, she wouldn't uh, want me to give uh, up a beat, though. Wrap it up. Wrap she wrap, wrap it up. They, that's what they did to me. All right, all right, I write you. But on that note, <laughs> what what do you? How do you? How do you celebrate the lives of people that have passed for you? How, how do you? How do you? What do you do in your life, or what did you do after that 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 you feel like continued on their legacy or celebrated their life in some kind of way? Because this that's supposed to be the topic of this show. We're gonna be talking about what what's the celebration. What you got? <laughs> you're supposed to do what you were meant to do. Like I say, those people, like especially those people close to you, like a parent, yeah, right. parents like that. More nine times out of ten, for you to be that affected by their death, whatever, you've had some kind of conversation with them about life stuff, whatever the case may yeah. be. So they know if you fucking up or you doing different stuff he like that. Probably them, is right? like I'm fucking up. Yeah. So, right. so 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 <laughs> so what you supposed to do from that death? Whatever, supposed to be like, hey, I'm supposed to. And sometimes, like you say, don't have them right after somebody dies, right? Mm -hmm. There's other things that pop up along the way to be like mm -hmm. that make you remember, like, hey, I remember this conversation. I remember this and that. He told me never to get married. Dad said, don't get married. I was like, you right, nigga. I will say, like, <laughs> there was a time right after my my father passed, where I was like, like I said, it, it took me a week to like really get for it to hit me, and like when I was really breaking down, one of the things that like my mom and my little brother told me was like, what do you think that they would want you to do? Would you do you think they want you to crawl into the grave with them? Mm -hmm. They think you think they want your life to be over when their life ends? Like that doesn't make sense. If they lived their life, their life is over. They wouldn't want you to be like, okay, well, end your life too. So both of us don't have shit to do. Like no, they want you to continue and keep progressing in your own life. I look at it like this, especially like with your parents. I look at it like uh, you do leave a legacy. 
Yeah. And at the end of the day, whatever, like I say, at the end of the day, when you, when your parent or whatever dies, whatever, if you have kids, you die and stuff like that, they're always going to be like, your parents pass away. They're always going to be like, oh, that's such a boy. Exactly. And stuff like that. I'm yeah. no such a such uh-huh. girl. But, but people going to remember yeah. who you came from. No. They're going to remember your people. The people that know your people going to be like, that's I don't want to hear I'm Gert's daughter, man. Every time I hear that, ugh. But, but, they but, think but, I'm no, but, but, but with that being said, though, that's also a reminder to yourself, all right? I am this person's child, all right? So at the end of the day, am I doing what I need to do to be, let's keep real, am I doing what I need to be better than them? Like to, to carry yeah. the, the legacy on with them? Or, or, am I, or am I doing all the shit that I don't like about them? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because like at the end of the day, like you're, you're the legacy that your parents leave, whether it's good or bad, it, it, you're a reflection of it. So like, it, it, like, we're not even just talking about your parents. Like Wash was saying, it's like whoever you like that you are close to that passes, you had conversations with them. You you discuss life with them in some kind, in one way or another. You may not discuss death and what you do after death, but you have dis- discussed life. And so if you know what y'all have agreed life is supposed to be like, then you know that that person doesn't want your life to end just because they are dead. Of course. So yeah, you right. should continue living it and. Like I said, that, that's the point of the whole second line after the funeral is that, like, after you get done grieving, it's like, okay, now. I want y'all to party it up. You got you to gotta get ready for the rest of your life. I need to be, and everybody said, I'm going to get these little tools for y'all, put some little ash on me around y'all neck, and when back that thing up, come come on. That's you, that's your your spirit in the back of that thing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a nine nine and a two towel. We're gonna put your little tools, your ashes, whatever, and we're gonna second line instead of waving the towel, he's gonna wave your ashes and that. Not all let, let you blow in the breeze. Yeah. Where y'all gonna line. be at? Somewhere by the wall. Yeah. Silly <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come be out like, that one. Be like, be like, that Is that her? Huh? Oh, that's, like, that's what y'all thought of me. That's what y'all thought of me. <laughs> So hurt. <laughs> you second line through Galveston on the seawall, spray your ashes into the water. And I'll be down there, I'll be like, Jesus. He's like, no, you start that. I said, look at them. Look at them niggas. <laughs> I said, not Galveston. It's all black. It is over Galveston. <laughs> Nothing. Nope. We second line down Galveston. Down the seawall. Spray the ashes. Down the seawall. Can I go back? I'll be like, can I go back? <laughs> They doing it all wrong. We gotta start over. We gotta do it over again. <laughs> Bring it back, DJ. But yeah, like I think, I was like, keep the trick man beat. Big old star dance, that ain't all right. <laughs> 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 but no, nah, right. <laughs> <laughs> do what you want. Let's go. Yeah, no, that's what you. I mean, but I think that's like I said. That's the whole point of second line. That's the whole point of like all of this shit dealing with death is that like after it's over, you know, shit, you gotta start living. Yeah, like you gotta live. Somebody gotta live. Like. If, the people that died are gone. I mean, you can't change that. It's sad, but they it gone. Is. It is. Like, they are gone and you still here. Like, somebody told me, like I said, somebody told me that. I think it was my mom and my little brother told me after my dad died, it's like, okay, he's gone and it's sad, but you still here. So, what you gonna do? You Ooh. still here. Because nobody want to keep hearing about your grief and shit. Nobody want to keep about I mean, you. I mean, I'm not going to tell nobody not to, to, to air their grievances or, or you know, to let their grief show or whatever. No, after, but after a certain after a certain point, you got to realize that, yes, you're going to grieve. I ain't never let it show, but I guess you can hear if you were close to me how I talk about stuff. Even today, how I talk about my dad, it's like, hey, I still miss him. Right. Like, I still got to live my life because shit don't stop. That's the the bills ain't stopped. Well, well, that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I was like, 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 shit, I gotta go back to work. Like I said, no, I'm not trying to be that blunt or whatever. Yeah. But like, nobody want to hear about the grieving shit like so many years down the road. It's been 10 years since somebody yeah. died. They've been like, well, you know, I'm not doing it. I'm not my doing my, my daddy died happened. and stuff like that. You yeah. know, like, people are like, like, hey, like, you think you shit? act that way because your daddy? I was like, no, I was really fucked up. More. <laughs> like, no, no, no. no. Like, I, like, I was going to say that. Like, I feel like I was a better person after he passed. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I kind of <laughs> came into it. I had to get my senses right. Like, okay. You, yeah, I mean, but that, up, that is one of the things that I have noticed about this. Even, even like I said, Kobe's there. Like, a lot of people have turned over this leap of, like, okay, I need to start living in the moment. I need to live my life. Yeah. Right, you never life know, is short. We didn't see that shit coming. No, he died out of nowhere. 41. Like, in the middle. 13. Like, oh, y'all think y'all going to the game. game. Yeah. But you got, yeah, like, it's, it's, shit, it's stuff like that that makes me think, I could get hurt driving. Yeah. And, and many times I got in a car accident, 
Thank God I'm alive. It must be a reason. You got a little bit more for me, Lord? Let me figure it out. Like, like, let's, 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 let's stop let's, stressing. Let's, I, I, stop stressing. I had with somebody, whatever, and they was like, uh, the Kobe thing, they was like, why do you need like somebody to die like that, whatever, to put yourself in perspective or say, I want to live my best life? Like, what if that's somebody you look and, up to and, that you like? But, 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 then, but then my response to that, because like I said, I see where they was coming from. Mm -hmm. But my response to that is, at the, end of, at the end of the day, some of us go through life, whatever, we lose track of certain things, whatever. Mm -hmm. So those kind of this are reset buttons to be like, hey, yep. don't put your ass back in perspective. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's yeah, a reminder. Yeah, it's a listen to people's issues and you be like, man, I hate this. Like, it's me. I ain't going to lie. I'll be like, I hate my job. Then I'm be like, you know what? Thank God I got a job. But I hate it. But yeah. <laughs> it's like, but it's I mean, people it's that's out here that don't have that, that be strong. Like, I don't have that issue. Well, Even yeah. though I'm like, hey, they might have both of their parents. They parents was fucked up. And but it's funny, it's not even like to look down on your own issues and be like, well, I'm, at least it's not as bad as this. Because I, I hate the people saying that like at least something like. Well, I mean, but I don't like. I, I think I'm more of I complain too much, and I need to stop complaining because it could get worse. Right. I mean, now complaining could stop, but to to acknowledge that you're in a bad situation and it could be better, it's not a bad thing. Like if you acknowledge, okay, I'm I'm not doing my best right now, and I'm not in my best position. That's okay. And then, and like Wash said, sometimes you need a reminder. Sometimes the things reset. like this death, this reset button to be like, okay, like I did have this in mind before and I had this goal that I was working towards, but I know that I was like, and I, I tried to, you know, really be good to people and talk to all my people all the time, but I haven't been lately. And this reminds me that, damn, like I do need to get back to that because these people, like, I'm, I, you never know when my last day is. You know, yeah, because how many times we talk to somebody, whatever, like I said, we're just talking about just everybody in general, not just parents, but you talk to somebody and you be like, man, fuck that, I'm going to talk to them tomorrow. Right. You don't think about that shit. Okay. Speaking about that, I mean, so because of this Kobe incident and the loss of, you know, those people on the helicopter, people do, or like a death period that happens. People do come to you like, hey, I just want to tell you I love you and blah, blah, blah. Like, I ain't gonna lie for a minute. I was like, I'm good. Why y'all taking well, it? There? I did for a little bit. No, I was no, like, you no, know right what? Though. Let me chill because that's how that person felt. It is. Now, what I will say, and this is something that I saw brought up on Twitter and stuff too, and I have to agree with this, is that like, there's a difference between like, making sure that you tell people they, that you love, you mm -hmm. know, make, make sure that you, the people that you care about know that you care about them and all that kind of stuff. And like, rekindling something toxic just because, oh, somebody died, so... You know what, let me read Yeah, out. okay. You know what that's what, okay. But, but what I'm saying is that, like, what I'm saying is that, like, um. Oh, when you left it out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, so we were talking about, um. Toxic, like, oh, yeah, don't, a toxic don't person that's telling you I love you up. Don't, yeah. So like, we got to realize who it is. You got to realize who it is. Like, like you said before, like, it, if that person is saying, I mean, once you realize this person is reaching out because of this reason or whatever. Okay, what if they, I got a question. Yeah, let's talk again. Well, I don't, I just don't, I don't know what to do. Well, I'm saying we just figure out the audio from the listening. We might have to, but I, I hate to try to do that because it's hard to splice that audio into anything. I don't understand why it froze though. Like, there's no reason for it to freeze. Like, nothing was going on. Was it too long? You said cutting it 30 minutes? Yeah. yeah. We got a Damn it, Ashley. I mean, I was talking like a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. That was, that's, I wanted to get there, too. But anyway, so, I mean, it's not recording, but fuck it. Uh, it's, 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 it's recording. What we were talking about was that, like, the toxic part. Like, mm -hmm. so, like, you can recognize that that person is reaching out to you and be like, you know, this is the emotion that they're dealing with, and you let them deal with their emotions. Like, that's, that's, that's okay. It's okay for them to deal with their emotions. But what you don't want to do is be like, okay, yeah, let's let's rekindle all this shit because of the stuff that happened. But I mean, that, that's not necessarily necessary. All you can do is like recognize the, the emotion, you know, acknowledge it. You know, I appreciate you for reaching out to me, blah, 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 whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. But once you get to a certain point, you just got to be like, okay, well, thank you. Like that, that's the end of it. Like you don't, you don't have to get jumped back into something bad. Just because of some situation, that, some tragic situation. And it's crazy. It's not. It's not the person never did anything to me. It's a real nice guy. It's just like. It's not somebody that you want to talk to like that. Right. So I got so to take two o'clock in the morning. I reached out to say. I mean, I was 
was shocking because I thought it was going to be like, you full of shit, bitch. To be honest, it was a long text message, so I was like, here we go with this full shit stuff. But no, nah, he was just saying like, he really appreciate me and all this other stuff. I was like, oh, appreciate you too. And that's, uh, and, and we'll end with this because uh, I had a recording, so I'm trying to get this over. Okay. That's but, boring, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, so. <laughs> Give you a woosah. I, we don't even need a woo saw. One of the things that we've been, kind of been discussing is is a whole woo saw segment. Is that like mm. you are you once you take debt, once you're dealing with debt, and you get to a certain point, you have to get to a point where you can be like, okay, now what is my next step? How am I going to fulfill the life that I should be living that this person would want me to live after that? After I've uh, recognized that you know they passed and I've grieved, but now like what, what do I need to do next? You start to start pushing towards something that you need to get done, and then that way, that that is the best way to honor a person that died is to do something with your life because you still have it. If they, if if Kobe Bryant was still alive right now, as as hard of a worker as he was, do you think that he would stop working? Would he have stopped working at forty one? That's Kobe. No, he would have kept going. So why would he? Why would you think that at forty when he died at forty one, he would think? Okay, well, if you were grinding, go ahead and stop grinding now. You know, I'm gone. Yeah, I'm gone. So, you can stop. Right. Well, like I said, I heard somebody say that before. Somebody was like, um, if you're alive, anything is possible. Exactly. That's the, as long as you're still taking yeah. your bread, keep moving. Yeah, you can make anything You can make anything in reality. Look, look at Trump. Eat. He made president. Well, I got time. Actually, what? Like all the way left. But, like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did? Oh. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're right, you're right. I mean, you're right. <laughs> that's, 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 that's whatever you put your mind to, whatever. Like I said, you can make it happen. So, like, people get discouraged and stuff. Like, when people have deaths in their family and or friends and stuff like that, people get, some people get discouraged, don't want to do nothing, and kind of go into, like, their little whole black hole and stuff. Right. While other people, like, you know what I'm saying, take advantage, but I need to do this. And you need to be like that. You need to be like, okay, what, like you say, what can I do to honor this person? To, to, to show... Like, and then that goes to my thing. I never want to be that person. And I, I feel like that is something like you hope to have, like, in longer life, like a family member, somebody that's older that you're looking at. I want to honor them mm-hmm. versus somebody younger and stuff like that. Nobody wants to be the homeboy that, or homegirl that dies, and then your friend's like, you know, I'm going to change my life. You know what I'm saying? Blah, blah. Right. And like, I ain't, live, <laughs> I ain't live my life shit. You know what I'm saying? But you're going you gonna to be this top person in the world and shit, and I'm big. You go on and you can't even enjoy it. Yeah. You the, the other thing that you learn besides besides that you want to honor a person's legacy is that you you also want to see that you never know when your life gonna be over. And you don't want your life to end and you ain't done shit yet. So like you want you want to live your life like this could be your last day. So what all can I accomplish today to move my life forward? You never want to die and be like, damn, I was gonna do this tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow <laughs> I was gonna say shit. I was I was gonna gonna next year they got that was my year. Yeah. <laughs> This year was my year, but next year, nigga? next year was gonna be my year. Next year, I'm dead. 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 I'm dead. I'm dead in the hole. And I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't do none of the shit that I said I'm gonna do. Dead, dead in the hole, nigga. So like, look at people, especially people that have died. Cause like I, I gotta look at like okay, say my dad or Kobe, whatever. Like my dad had lived a full life. He was sixty when he died. So like he had done a lot. He had been in the Navy. He had traveled. He had, I mean, like, not traveled far, but they traveled yeah. to the United States with the Navy and shit. But then, like, and then, like, you know, he had played sports in college. He had had a family. Like, his kids were grown. Like, me and my sister were already out of college and had full jobs by the time we, like, we had been working our careers for, like, five years. He was, he actually saw my sister start building her practice, and he died right before she finished it. But, like, he had lived a life already. So like I don't want my life to end and be like, damn, I didn't get to live a life. You know what I'm saying? Like I I, I was going to though. Like I was gonna have a family. I was gonna do some crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, I don't wanna be like, I'm gonna do all that shit and then damn, woke up dead. So what y'all saying, I need to find somebody I can have a family with. No, no you need to do what you want to do. do what you want to do. <laughs> family might be it. Whatever your goal is, that's what you need yeah. to work on. If you have a goal in life, some people it's family, some people it's like career stuff. Like if whatever your goal is. Do that, like work on that now. Don't don't be like, you know, well if I wait about it, my five year, ten year plan is no no no. Mm. What, what what's your plan for now? If even if it is a like five year plan, what are you gonna get accomplished? Now? I would like to be in an ugly suit hanging with Jay Z you now at the brunch. Yes. Eating that terrible ass brunch that they were eating. Yes. Uh, did you see the menu for that shit? No, it was bad. It was like bacon oh, I, I, I said where the bacon at? It, it wasn't they shit. Vegan. 
It was disgusting. Like, I mean, it I was like, to, it looked expensive. I didn't want to throw in the ugly suit party that I'm famous like that, and we got grits and all kinds of stuff. I just want to be me at the ugly suit party, just smile on the back of everybody's picture. Like, yeah, I love that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. They don't let everybody in. I know they ain't. I ain't wearing so, no fucking hair. So if that's your goal, <laughs> no. what are like, you doing today? To get to that point by the end, by within the next few days or the next year, don't be like, you know what, man. One day, you know, probably about ten years from now, I could probably get to no. Like, okay, so what are you doing now? That ain't my goal to go to that extra. But. I mean, my my goal is to to throw on an ugly suit and go anywhere. But then, like, I wanna my 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 goal is like I say, I don't I don't have a goal to to go chill with them. All right, my goal is that at the end of the day that I get myself in a position where I will never get turned away. Interest into anything I want to do, right? That if I want to go to the party, access yeah, I, got, I got access to it. If I want to go somewhere else, I got access to it. You know, and, and this is off, tra- off topic, and we can end on this. But one of my goals has always been like, I, I think that one one of the things that I like, and I think I was different from people even when I was younger, was that I always wanted to be behind the scenes of everything. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanted I can't to be, be the person. That way, though. I, I can't be. I can be. I can be low key. I'm that bad. But like I could be the person I want to be the person I can't that see you. like everybody knows that's important. Like no no nobody nobody oh. insignificant knows like you know what I'm saying like, like Harvey Weinstein. God dang. <laughs> why why? Why there? I'm talking about like if you can name like any other producer. No, but, 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 but I see what you're saying. Yeah, but, no, but, but, but that's my I was been my goal. I like, know who it was, so yeah. no. <laughs> that's my thing too. Yeah, basically, he was I, a man, though. I ain't gonna lie. And everybody knew who he was. Yeah, like I, I say, can't lie. Yeah. Dr. Mirror, I see. I'm like, damn. Yeah, but I'm saying, I want to be, I want to be the nigga that I can go to the, all these extravagant events and the parties, or whatever. And everybody in the mug knows me, but I can go to fucking Kroger and you stop good. and be like, like, like that's me. what I'm saying. Like, everybody, I mean, wrong person, probably. My bad. That's what I think of. But yeah, no, not, I, got, not I, got, I, got, I, I got, just watched the documentary. I got Beyonce in my context, whatever. But I'm at fucking H-E-B. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like by myself. Like you get hit up by like big time people that, that are like in the spotlight, but I don't want to be in the spotlight. So I think that my yeah, oh, I forgot his brain like that. But <laughs> but like that's that's like my end goal, and, I, and it's not even really a goal. I'm just saying like that would be ideal for me. I could live my life and not be there, and I'd be fine. Yeah. But at the same time, like if if I wanted to do those types of things, that's where I would want to be. I wouldn't want to be famous. I would want to be at that level of I know all the famous people, but I'm good. If yeah, they don't interest me at all. Yeah, no, nah, I'm good. I don't need. I don't. I don't. I don't want to not be able to go out of my house and go to Target. Yeah, like that shit's stupid. Like I couldn't imagine being in, in that life where I couldn't leave my. All house. Right, if you're going out to Target, you get about to get a whole bunch of pictures taken. You're like, what the hell, Ashley got on the bonnet? Like, what about, about what you buy, Ashley? I, well, first of all, I wouldn't go out the house and look at that roof. Whatever, you but, know me. I gotta yeah, go. You know, like Cardi B in the mall that time. Who <laughs> she? But oh, hey, she. It is what it is. That's Cardi B. She's going to do what she wants. That's end probably day, me. End of the day, with, work uh, towards your goal so that you can clothes. go to mismatched clothes and other boots to Target and get stopped by the paparazzi, whatever you want to do. And a nice robe. But at the end of the day, the, the death of somebody else should either motivate you to live out the, live out the legacy that you should that you would want to live because of them, or it should motivate you to be like, okay, this is tomorrow not promised to me. I never know when I'm going to die, so I need to start doing they make every day count towards something. So that when I do leave, because the only thing promised to you is death. Only thing that is you guaranteed to happen to you is you're gonna die one day. Scary. It's scary as fuck, but you're gonna die. My body hurt now. I think about this shit and, and I think that's what and I keep saying we're gonna edit. But I think that's one of the things I realized with my dad was that like I realized at that point, like, everybody gonna die. Mm-hmm. Everybody I know, either, either I'm going to die before them or they're going to die before me, but everybody's going to die. So, what are we doing to get ready for that moment? Because we don't know what happens after death. You know, if you believe in heaven, people believe in hell, if you, if you believe in all kinds of reincarnation, whatever, you don't know what happens after you die, but what you do know is what you're dealing with right now. You're going to die, so what are you going to do before you get there? And enjoy it. The whole point of the second line is to enjoy it. Stop. Enjoy your life. I'm a second line everywhere I go. Okay, all right. Well, pick up. You're going to say, Ashley, I still think you a cracky <laughs> right on the street with an umbrella and shit. <laughs> hey, baby, it's Boogaloo, baby. <laughs> it's Boogaloo. <laughs> it's Boogaloo. 
it's me, you know me, you know the little baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, God damn, it's crazy. I'm not going to I got no money. I got no chain. I got no chain. I'm not going to I don't need you to clean my windshield. Yeah, I don't need you to clean my windshield. I can be in the car. I don't think I'm going to be on the corner doing it. Like, she ain't got no bucket. Get no squeegee. Really? She ain't got no squeegee. First of all, I ain't gonna be out in the street like that. Boogaloo? Come on now. If you sing a line, you gotta be in the street, baby. I can be where I'm at. Line. You can sing around through your office too. They still think you crazy. They think I'm crazy now. It doesn't matter what I do. What? Yep. They be like, oh my god, don't mess with black chick. Oh my god. She got a fro. But anyway. I know they was like fat bitches. Goddamn Curtis. You have any parting words for us, Ashley? No. Say something. I was going to say something, but I was, I'm going to. No, you know, just live your life, man. There you go. Just keep on rocking, man. Just keep on rocking. Boogie nights and shit. What about you, Watch? Do what you supposed to do, what you meant to do for yourself, your own goals, and what you might have to discuss with people, loved ones that's not here anymore. You know what I'm saying? Live, live your, like people say, live your best life, but it might live the life you think you're supposed to live. Yep. Live my best life. And I just, like, like I said, I wanted, you know, seeing those as I thought the family, the people that died. And then, like, you know, people brought up a whole bunch of other stuff. Like, everybody that dies, I, I, I send condolences to the family because I know that death is hard. And I know there was, there was more deaths going on mm -hmm. than what happened with Kobe. But at the end of the day, no matter who death you're dealing with, we want you to work to a point where you're living your life, living your best life past that point. Because nobody wants you to die with them. Do not die with the person that passes. Like, you, your life still is going on and you need to live it before you die because you're going to die too. You, and you saw how great that person was when they died. You want your life to yeah. be great before you die too. What you told me, death don't have no age. Death don't have no death, age. Death, death, death knows no race, age, uh, creed, color, nothing. Finances, you know, whatever. You don't fuck about nothing. Yeah. You can be rich as fuck, poor as hell. You're going to die yeah. at the end of the day. Everybody got to die. That's why we gonna live it up in second line. I would I'm, I'm gonna name this episode second line, but I would have named it everybody gotta die. <laughs> Don't do I that. Second, <laughs> second line people die every day, man. Second line, mm -mm, second mm -mm. line is dying every day, man. Mm -mm. It, it's part of life. Mm -mm. Anyway, that's it. That's all we got. Well, as always, hope you laughed a little, learned a lot. Hope you helped you find the remedy the way it was troubling you. This is the Russian Remedy Podcast. All right, y'all. Peace. 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 He's on black power. It's miracle and shit. Yeah.